Cześć, czołem, kluski pod stołem. We are back to our tutorial. So we finished at importing a file from the form. As you can see, it's still thinking. I don't know if you can see here, but it's basically we stopped it, stopped the program at this line. It's still kind of at this point. So I'm gonna release it now. Uh, we can go back to analyzing this file. So in the previous video, I showed you that this, this file variable is indeed storing our Excel file and now we are ready for processing it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install, so let's clear our terminal and let's pip install open py excel. So it's open then py then excel. Okay, that's done. And let's import it here. Import open py excel and it's in there, okay. Let's go down here. And um, what we want to do is we want to open it in Open PY Excel. So what it's usually done for that is we want to open the workbook, and that's the Excel lingo workbook. Uh, in Open Excel, uh, Open PY Excel dot load workbook. And as, as you can see, the autocomplete already co could see the load workbook. That's good. And we want to pass the file name. Uh, which is file and read only I'm gonna say false because we want to go through it if it's just read only it wouldn't allow us to do all the all the stuff that we want to do and okay so as you might remember and I have it ready here um, the, we have two different formats of Excel files but also we have different tabs in here so we have not only a workbook but there, there are multiple tabs underneath in here and we want to go through all of them so what we have to do is we have to get those tab names. So tab names, uh, we can take it from workbook.getSheetNames, and that's a function. And then we want to iterate through all those tab names. So for tab name in oh, names in tab names, we want to start taking those worksheets one by one and analyze them. So worksheet is workbook of the tab name. That easy. There is another way of doing it. I think uh, it was something like get sheet by name and you just put in tab name here. So it's but I think it's the same. I think it's the same. Uh, it, this is shorter. So I'm going to stick to this. OK. Um, so we have our worksheet and now we want to start extracting information from that worksheet. So one thing we can start with is the pollutant name, which is in the tab name in here. And so let's have a look at two different formats. The 2014 format has it this way, PM10 underscore something something. And then we have in 2016 PM10 and that's it. So how do we make sure that both times we know that we're looking at the same thing? The repetition is still there because we still have exactly the same PM10 here and here, but it's just some tail. And then NO2 is here, NO2 is here, O3, O3, and so on. So they're exactly the same un until the underscore. So what I think is the, the easiest way is this. The pollutant name is the tab name, and we want to split it by underscore. And then we want to join it. So basically, no, no, we don't want to join it. We just want to take the first item of that split. If there is an underscore, then the first bit will be this and then this and then this. So basically tab name dot split underscore will do this. In here, it's going to create a list of PM10 comma. So first item PM10, then station, then statistics. In here, it's going to create a list of PM10 and that's it. That's going to be just first and last element, which still works for this. OK, so this way we make sure that we are taking only this bit from the front. OK, and now, as you might remember, we want to store pollutants as a an entry. It's not just a string. It's an entry. It has a name and we put in a removed field as well in case we want to get rid of it but we don't want to delete it actually so what we want to do is we want to get it or create it and there is a functionality like this 
So let's do something like this. Pollutant is, aha, okay. So obviously we have to, so I'm gonna just comment it out for a second. And obviously we need to import from air pollution or we can just, yeah, air pollution, air pollution dot models, import pollutant. Okay, for now we just need a pollutant and comment. And I'm using command and slash for commenting and uncommenting. Pollutant is pollutant dot objects dot get or create. And that's a pretty cool thing, especially because I made this a primary key. So the name is basically, we can now get or create by name. So let's go in here and just say, get or create by name of pollutant name. So if you find in database a pollutant with PM10 for the name, then get it from the database. But if you can't find it there, create it and get it. So we want to store in here a pollutant that is stored on our database. It doesn't matter if it's already there or not, it's gonna get created in case it's not there, which is pretty cool. Okay, this is the first and easiest bit. Now we need to get in to our Excel file and tell our program how to look at certain pieces of data, what goes where, where's the country, where the data starts, by, by the way, because as you can see here, uh, in 2014, data starts in 10th row and in here in 7th, actually in 8th, so 11 and, and 8. So different places. Uh, we need to be smart about it and figure out the way how we uh, tell open PY Excel, uh, where to start, what are the headers and so on. So it's going to be pretty interesting. And that's where the helpers kick in. Okay, that's where I want to use the helpers. So um, in here, I want to do something like this. I want to extract three different pieces of information from one function. And if you don't know Python very well, this is a, a pretty cool stuff that you're going to see right now, which is something like this. Headers row. I want to get the information where the headers are in which row. So here it's seven, here it's 10. So that's one piece of information. Then I want to get something like headers. So what are the headers and where they are? So which column? So a country is an A then cities and B and so on. And also I want to know what are the units, because again, if you will look at the units here, um, in 2014, units are packed in one of the headers, and in 2016, units are in here. So there, there is a different way of extracting what are the units, and also we are going to have a look how to approach the, this difference. Uh, that information we'll get from a function from helpers that doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to create it in a second, called get headers and units. Okay, and the only argument it takes is the worksheet that we are working on. And every time we go through each worksheet, um, it, it can generates a new worksheet and it, it, it does it again, again and again and again. So it does it for all of them. Okay, that doesn't exist because I didn't create it yet. So I'm going to take it here to helpers, define and takes us so worksheet. I'm going to pass it for now. So it doesn't give me an error. Okay, it does nothing basically for now. And in here I need to import it. So from air pollution dot helpers import get headers and units. And now it works nice. Okay, and now what we need to do is make sure that we return three pieces of information, the same way as I try to uh, catch three pieces of information. So let's go to helpers. And in helpers, we want to start with maybe this. Headers row. So where the headers are in each Excel file will be for now none because we didn't find it yet. We just want to initialize all the all the all the result data. Headers is a, a dictionary where I'm going to store the headers, and each header will tell which column it is in. And then we need the units. And for now we have nothing, so I'm going to just put a an empty string. So the first thing, and I'm going to do something that I usually don't do, but uh, the inline comments, it's the last resort. I try to use the self-commenting. So for example, if the function is called get headers and units, 
it's self-explanatory. Uh, in here, the, the function will have a couple of pieces, a couple of modules of, of itself. I don't want to split it too much into small functions, so I'm going to put a couple of inline comments. So in here, we're going to get a header headers row and how to approach it. So basically what I want to do is I can see the pattern that is exactly the same in both that in here and in here we have a country. So that's a good thing. So we can basically go through the cells on the in the A column and check if it contains country. This one has country ISO and this one has country. So, and I can see that none of them, none of the comments here have a word country in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all those cells and be like, okay, if you find country here, that this, then this is the role. This is where the headers are. So, and how do I get that information? So let's put a breakpoint here and maybe refresh the debugger just to make sure that we are on the same page. And so let's refresh. And as you can see, are you sure you want to send a form again? And yeah, I can I can send it again instead of getting all those files there. And it took it a while to load the file. As you could see, it didn't just like swipe left straight away um, because this this bit here takes a while to load. It's a couple of megabytes. So obviously it takes a while to load. OK, so but we want to see what's in this worksheet. Uh, what I want to do basically is I want to make sure that I'm scrolling only through the, the, the rows that we have in here. I don't want to go and scroll and maybe for some reason I didn't find country. So I'm going here, here, here. There's a thousand and more and more and more. I don't want to just like keep keep going. I just want to check all the, the, the elements that are there in my Excel file. So in this WS, and I can see that I lost it. So I'm going to just refresh. And refresh here refresh here so okay so it didn't work so let's upload maybe this one is smaller so it takes less time to uh, to load it there you go and in worksheet let's make it a little bit bigger let's have a look here and what do we have in here max row is that correct i wouldn't say so but for some reason but anyway, for some reason, this file says that the max row is 13,071, which is somewhere very, very low. If I click here and do something like command and down, well, it went even lower. So yeah, for some reason, it doesn't tell me the right information. Maybe there are spaces here, whatever happened there. It's not a big deal. I'm just kind of showing you what kind of information you can get from, from worksheet. The column seems to be right. And if you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, indeed 11 is the is the max column. So that's right, but that, that doesn't seem to be right. But anyway, let's use this information here for our for loop. So for row in range. So we want to go from 0 to worksheet.max row. And in case it was right, we want to go plus one because we want to make sure that it, it takes a look at the last one as well. And now we want to check if the A column has country as a value in its cell. So let's do something like this. If is instance, and I need to check it because so if, if it's empty, it's a non uh, value. So it's not, a it's not an empty string in here. This, this, this cell isn't an empty str string, it's, it's a non value. And if I try to do some comparison with the like country in cell and cell is none, then th there would be an error. So maybe let's go up here and do something like this. Cell is worksheet and a column and the row. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And this is how it goes. This is 0, 1, and so on debugger is kicking me back so I'm gonna just turn it off and uh, so that's zero one two three and so on and so in helper this is the cell that we were looking at we we are looking at the column a and the row zero one two three four okay so we want to make sure that the cell is a string so that's how you check it is instance object and the type so if it's none then Already in here, it would stop. It would say, no, it's not, not, it's not string, so I'm not even checking this. 
So it's not going to give us give us an error anymore. So we want to check if country is uh, sorry in uh, cell, and I'm going to take it to lower because, as you can see here, country is capital here and there is capital here. So I want to make sure that there is lowercase country and make sure that the, the cell that I'm looking at, the, the value inside of that cell. Oh, by the way, the value, I need to take the value from there. And so, yeah, so it needs to be lower case. So if it if there is, so if this is true and this is true, so there is country, then I want to do something like this. Headers row is just row. So that's where the headers are. And I want to break and I want to break from this for loop. And now there is a chance that it went through all that for loop and it never got in here. For some reason, there is no country in there and headers row never was assigned, nothing was assigned to, to headers row, so it's still none. And that means we don't have headers, we can't continue. So obviously we're gonna stop in here, so let's say something like this. If headers row is none, oops, is none, return none, none, and none. So basically in here, we're gonna put in this worksheet and use this function that we are building now in the helpers, and we need to return three times something because we put it in here like this. It has to be able to unwrap three different elements. But in here we can say, oh, headers row is none. So we need to finish processing. Something went wrong and we need to inform the user that the file is not correct. Okay, so we can continue if, so if the header is none, it's going to return in here. But if not, then we can continue in here. So the next thing is another piece of this function. So we want to remember the positions of, of all the headers. So, so what we are going to do in the future is we're going to go row by row. And each of these rows will be basically a list of all the, all the elements. So the, the value of AT is stored in row at zero. This one will be at one, at two, at three, at four, and so on. So we're, we need the, an, an index of each of the columns. And we're gonna gather it here. So let's put a comment. Headers positions. Headers positions. And what we want to do is we're gonna go through all those all those columns. And as you might remember, we can use the max column um, property from the worksheet for this. And uh, we want to check. Okay, if there is country in this header, then this is the country header, and so on. So we need to get uh, take care of this in here. So for i, for index, in range. And what I want to do is I want to do something clever, because as you probably figured out, we need a letter and not a number. So we need to do something clever in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like this. For i in range, and I'm going to do ws max column. Okay, and so it's going to go from 0 to 11, and the column every time will be something like this. Car of i plus 65. And what that is, let's have a look in here. So a is, say, 0. What is a if I saw so column is, column is char of a plus 65 enter so what is column oops it's a okay because i went from so that's one oh no sorry zero so zero plus 65 and 65 in ascii is capital letter i eh, sorry a not i um yeah so this is my approach here i'm gonna just go and do a b c d e f g using the i from the max column so i'm gonna just go through the columns that are uh, have some values in it instead of just going on and on and on okay so that's our column and we want to do something like this header is worksheet of the column at the headers row which we figured out in here. So we know where the headers are, now we are taking the advantage of it in here.
for some reason I can see here ah okay <laughs> I need to get this back because that would be a, a pretty crazy for loop nested for loop uh, that has to be outside so basically I want to say okay with the name the, the value of this of the, the, the whatever is inside of every header is this worksheet column headers and value and now let's have a look here we have different names for each head for for different data sets in here we have country ISO in here we have country here we have city name in here we have city in here we have station and we, an underscore uh, here we have air quality station with no underscores and so on so there are similarities but there are differences so we need to come up with the idea how to make sure that one thing is they are the same so we can recognize both 2014 and 2016 and at the same time they're unique so if i'm searching for say name i can i can find this and this so that's not a good idea to search for name but if i look for city i think only this this column here has city in it so this is my approach and i did check it so i'm not going to waste your time but basically you need to make sure that if you're looking for certain phrase it has to be unique for headers otherwise you're going to pick something else that so first thing we want to do is um, clean our header a bit. So what I'm going to do is this header dot strip. And what it does, let's check in here. So let's say header is something like this, ABC space. Okay. And now we want to see what is header dot strip. Oops. It's ABC with no spaces on left and right, basically. So if I did something like this and do header strip, then we get rid of both spaces on left and right. And you know, sometimes we leave a space um, in Excel file and that can mess it up. So we strip it first and then we want to replace all the underscores with nothing. We want to remove all the underscores basically. And also we want to lower it. So it's just, just we are on the same page. They're exactly you know, they're lower, there are no underscores, and there are no spaces on the left and right side. So now, first thing I want to have a look at is this. Get units. And now, why do we start with the units? Because this is not one of the headers. I don't want to store this as a header. So that's the units here, and that's the units here. And they're not... I don't need that information. I don't need that information, and I only need that information from here. So it's not exactly a header, the units. Um, I just need to extract this and I need to extract this once per worksheet. So this is why I'm starting with this. I'm, I'm starting with checking. Obviously, we're going to start here and what, what's going to happen is not going to see any units in here and just save it and save this, save this, save this, save this, save this, save this. And then it gets here. It's like, oh, I can see M3 in here. And that means this is one of the one of the units header. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So if we can find M3 in header we want to now extract that uh, unit so we can find and I checked n neither of all those headers have m3 except for this one so we are sure that we are looking at the right header to extract the units and now what we want to do is we want to get this information from between the brackets okay and this is how I approach it obviously you can do the regex uh, and probably in the future we'll use some of the, of the uh, regex uh, regular ex regular expressions but for now we're going to do something a little bit simpler we want to find where units index is so where in that string the units start okay and that's going to be something like this header find and we want to find opening bracket we want to find this the index of this and add one to it and now we're going to collect whatever is between this index and closing bracket. Okay, so for index in range, unit index. So we start with the unit index. So we want to start in here at the, the micro, me, milligram, uh, micrograms. And, da, 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 da. and we want to go as far as, let's say, unit index say plus 10 um, obviously 
I can see here we need just five letter uh, characters. Well, let's say let's assume maybe something crazy is gonna happen. Maybe even twenty because we can break out of it. As long as at the moment we find the closing bracket, we break from this for loop, so it's fine. So let's check it. Let's if header of that index is indeed closing bracket, then just break. Otherwise, so if we put that break in here, that means we're out of the loop, so we don't need to put else in here. Because obviously, oh, sorry. Because obviously it's not gonna continue if that if statement is true. So what we wanna do is we wanna do units, and let's add each ca character by character from the header that we iterate. Header index, okay? And now we can just finish here. And we're going to say something like this. If there's M3 in the header, we don't want to continue. We just want to do this. and We want to go back to this for loop. So I'm going to just say continue. And continue means don't stop, don't break from the for loop, but just skip this step. I'm, I'm happy with only this portion of the for loop. You don't need to continue with this for loop. Just go back here and do the next one. Okay, and then... So basically, if there is M3 in the header, we just want to do this and go back and check the next header. So we took care of the first option here. So we took, took care of this. But what if we are in 2016 and there is no M3 in the header, but there is a word unit. So there is another statement we have to put in here. Elif unit in header so so we have the header but we don't need any information from the header we want an information from the cell below the header and that's uh, the easy bit units in that case will be worksheet of the column and the headers row plus one value okay and so basically it just goes one down and takes that information from there and also, if we found unit, then we want to continue. Uh, okay. Okay, so maybe let's do a quick recap here because I can see this video is pretty long and I don't want to make too long videos. So let's maybe use our debugger and see how our code is doing. One thing we need to fix very quick before we start, let's go and uh, change the indentation here because I made a mistake. It shouldn't be indented. It shouldn't be inside of this for loop. It should be obviously outside of this for loop. So after going through all the rows and not finding the, the headers row, we need to kick back and say, hey, uh, we didn't find a row for the header, so I have nothing for you. I can't process it any further. So let's refresh the debugger, uh, send the file upload and let's go through the get headers and units function from helpers so obviously first we initiate initialize those variables here and then go through so first cell is pm10 measurements etc so it's a, it's all the comments from and it wasn't there was no country inside so the the headers row wasn't we didn't find it okay and the next one now it's none so as i mentioned before if it's empty cell then we get the non type in here that's why we were doing the is instance of string because if it's none then we can't do this okay so i'm going to skip it to here and use this so i stopped here or if you want you can select this line and click here and then it jumps all the way here so we went through all this for loop and indeed it found the headers row which is nine cool happy enough so now let's have a look what's going on here. Remember headers uh, position. So we want to, we only started this module, this part of the, um, the, the function, but let's see what happens now. So it takes the column, column is A, because we're going, th you know, through all the columns here and we do this and we get A for now. So it's the first one. Uh, the header name was at the beginning um, 
something else country ESO with the capital and underscore but then we stripped it we replaced the underscores with nothing and then we lowered it so now we have country ESO which is fine and now we're checking if there is m3 or unit in it and obviously none of them uh, will work until we get to the unit so I'm gonna just select one of those and skip and finally we got there and the uh, column is H uh, and I is 7 the name of the header is air pollution level milligram per cubic meter so it found it and now we are gonna go through and take one by one so units as you can see here is empty for now but one by one we're gonna get add milligram and watch watch this here now we have milligram and now we have slash we have m3 and we have we're finished because it found the closing bracket so we are breaking this loop okay so we broke this loop we didn't bro break this loop so it's fine and now we can continue okay so that now we are getting the next header which is um let's have a look the next header is latitude okay so in the next video we're going to continue from here and get all those headers and store them in the headers uh, variable and then at the end we're gonna return it to our views and continue our processing uh, sorry for a long video sometimes it takes a while I want to explain what I'm doing here I want to not only just go through it very quick but kind of show you the, the thought process I told you it, it took me a couple of hours to come up with this code so now I just want to you know pass the gist of, of this code okay so thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye bye